from my comments. If you have to finance it all, then you don't deserve that car. Pay cash for what you can afford and never, never, never finance a depreciating asset. Pay cash and just drop it in my driveway, leave the title in the seat and I'll register it. Take that thousand dollar dock fee and shove it. This should be shown to every high school student with the final explanation that if you want a car, use self-discipline, save your money, and buy with your cash. Why take out a loan if you're looking to pay it off? The first payment, it makes no sense. Just pay cash in the first place. Paying cash is the only reasonable way to buy a car. Pay cash and maintain it. Don't ever finance. Pay cash. Cars are depreciating assets. There are so many comments just like these across the interwebs of automotive channels and it makes you wonder, are there that many people out there paying cash for car purchases in today's market? Pros, cons, do's, don'ts, and how to's. Let's get into it. Hi everybody, I'm Kimberly and welcome to Auto Finance Sense where I help you make sense of the dealership finance office the next time you buy a car. Let's get started. I'm taking my business to a different dealer that wants to actually sell cars and not financing. That's what I would say if the dealership implied forced financing where they say, if you want to buy our car, you'll have to finance with us. In May of 2023, Automotive News let us know that dealership finance offices were facing more cash deals and that those deals had grown over the past year, a trend that was eating into dealership finance insurance revenue. To the dealership finance department, a cash deal is considered real cash, but when the buyer gets outside financing, that's considered a cash deal as well. In this video, we're gonna be referring to the cold, hard kind of cash. In a recent survey, CDK Global asked approximately a thousand new car buyers how they financed their purchase. And in their recent article by senior content editor, Courtney Galliard, nearly three out of 10 paid in cash. And it goes on to say, so who exactly is paying for the full cost of a car up front at the dealership? The answer might surprise you. By far the biggest group paying cash for a new car or acquiring one as a gift is Gen Z. Now Gen Z, or Zoomers as they're called, are those who were born between 1997 and 2012, and they also have the label of being the most stressed out generation. But it goes on to say, evidence points to Gen X, parents of Zoomers, that are covering auto expenses, from down payments to car loans, even though it's putting them in financial dire straits. One bank rate report found seven in 10 parents have or are making financial sacrifices like tapping into emergency savings, retirement funds, and prolonging debt payoff to financially support their kids. And don't forget that for the first time, auto loan debt surpassed student loan debt. And at the end of Q2 of 23, Auto loan debt reached $1.58 trillion compared to $1.57 trillion in student loan debt. I want to thank all of you so much for being here and hitting the like, subscribe, and notification bell for my channel. Speaking of stress, you've probably heard of the fast-rising cash spending, the future is not guaranteed, doom spending. Doom spending refers to making purchases as a way to cope with the current state of the economy and foreign affairs. It's a sort of retail therapy and emotional response to deal with negative events. You'll find viral videos on TikTok and elsewhere of people saying things like, we'll never be able to afford things like a home or family with children, which once accounted for the American dream. So enjoying what you have while you can by spending that money now is the way to go. According to Credit Karma, 96% of Americans are concerned about the current state of the economy. More than one quarter of Americans doom spend to cope with stress. And nearly one third of Americans have taken on more debt amid increased spending. So it's a no wonder that in the last six months, nearly half of Americans say that their financial situations have worsened and or savings have decreased. 
Caitlin Walsh, Chief Marketing Officer at Laurel Road says, a tip that I often share with others is that when I wanna make a big purchase or buy something I may not necessarily need online, I will add it to my shopping cart and think about it for a day. If after 24 hours I return to my cart and still feel that I want or need the item, I'll buy it. Are you kidding me right now? My tip is don't put it in your cart. Don't take the time to think about it, just know. There's a difference between needing to put food on your table and keeping a roof over your head versus quote, 30% who are worried about not being able to spend money on things that make them happy. Put it down in the comments below. How did you get your first car? What was it? My dad loved working on cars and I learned to drive an old Dodge pickup truck with three on the tree. He then fixed up a 68 Volkswagen Beetle for me later in high school. But for us, it definitely paid to have the knowledge of fixing up older vehicles. And I certainly believe that it still holds true today. Bankrate says, as to why people are finding themselves carrying credit card debt, 43% of adults who carry a balance say it's primarily because of unexpected emergency expense. These expenses include unexpected medical bills, necessary car repairs, home repairs, other unexpected or emergency repairs. But a main reason people are carrying credit card debt is day-to-day -day expenses. That's dangerous. With 26% of balance carrying consumers saying that groceries, childcare, and utilities are the reason that they carry credit card debt from month to month. So not only do we see a buildup of buried, underwater negative equity deals headed down the pike, but you can also see a spike of high debt to income ratios coming with them, which is a bad combination for trying to qualify for financing should you want to do that for a vehicle in the future. Sidecar, buy here, pay here businesses, often known for predatory lending practices captures 14.7% of the used car financing market. Okay, on the flip side, with the plethora of information out there, it's easy for people that might be struggling financially to think and feel like no one has liquid cash to spend, no one pays cash for a car, everyone's in the same boat as I am. Ah, but they do. And they got to that point by learning to be smart with their money, keeping credit utilization low, saving, and investing wisely, not doom spending. Look, personal finances are no one's business but their own. However, I can tell you that I have seen way too many people that may have had a relative pass away, leaving them an inheritance, and what's the very first thing that they do? They run to the dealership spending every penny on new cars. When it comes to auto loans, I found it interesting that in a recent Lending Tree article by Maggie Davis, on average, Americans took out $59.8 billion in new auto loans each month in the third quarter of 2023. By age, Americans younger than 50 took out $36.6 billion in auto debt monthly during the third quarter, according to the New York Fed, compared with 22.1 billion among those 50 and older. So when might you wanna finance and when might you wanna pay cash? Well, let's start by looking at some pros and cons. Pros, no interest, obviously. Paying cash means that you don't have to deal with interest rates and that's a significant amount of money saved, especially over the life of a loan. Full ownership. Owning the car outright gives you a sense of security. There are no worries about repossession if you hit a rough patch financially. Less paperwork. You won't need to complete a credit application. See this video linked below in the description box for more information. You won't need to sign a bank contract. However, most dealerships will still have you go through the finance office if they have one. You may go through the menu process for compliance as well, and you still have to sign paperwork. There's just less of it. And potentially lower insurance premiums, and you don't need gap coverage. Now, in our economy, insurance premiums are going through the roof. 
With an auto loan, lien holders generally will require you to have full comprehensive coverage. But when you own your car outright, you may have other less expensive coverage options available. If you currently have a loan, simply paying off your car loan is not going to automatically reduce your premiums, but getting rid of some of the required coverage might. So be sure to check out premiums and do it before you buy the car. Now here are some potential cons. Reduce liquidity. Paying cash means tying up a significant amount of money at once, reducing overall liquidity. Along with opportunity costs, that money could be invested elsewhere. There might be an impact on credit. If we pay cash, we won't be building credit through an auto loan. And depending on where we are in life, that might affect future borrowing power. Limited budget flexibility. So you might not have the flexibility that comes with spreading out payments over time, and a large cash payment could strain the budgets of some. And if you're buying used, paying cash for an older, higher mileage vehicle, it might end up costing you more in repairs if you don't know how to do them yourself. So when might you want to finance? Well, when there's a low APR or a combined incentive being offered by the manufacturer with no prepayment penalty. Or maybe you need a car loan to build or repair your credit. Auto loans are the second largest purchase and weigh heavy on your credit. Or you know there's no prepayment penalty to pay this off or refinance it. There are a few scenarios for this. It might be that you're financing to get those combined incentives. Or there's a special vehicle that you've negotiated a great price on, but the dealer wants you to finance with them. You could walk or you could finance it and pay it off early. And lastly, if you're a business, be sure to check with your accountant to see if there are any tax benefits to financing your vehicles. When might you wanna pay cash? Well, when you have specifically saved for this purchase, it helps you to stay within budget as you're spending money that you have available. And when spending this kind of money, when it won't affect you or your personal finances either way. What are some do's and don'ts when paying cash at the dealership? Well, do speak with the dealership ahead of time and ask them if you can write a personal check. Do be sure that you have an agreed upon, signed and accurate purchase order where everything is itemized out with firmed up fees before you write or obtain the check. You wanna be sure you're not off by a cent, especially not a cent too high. Don't ever bring physical cash into the dealership. I have had people literally take their cash out from under mattresses, the walls, the floorboards, shove it into paper bags, and bring it into my all glass office and dump it onto the desk where it had to be counted. This is not safe for you and it's not safe for dealership personnel. Don't do it. There's nothing comical about it, period. Don't let the salesperson know up front that you're paying cash. And for that matter, don't talk about payments either. Work on the actual price of the vehicle first and always be prepared to walk if they try and force you into financing with them or raise the price of the vehicle because of how you choose to pay for the vehicle. Because of tighter lending guidelines and higher prices, Q4 of 2023 showed record amounts of down payments and monthly payments. And according to Edmunds figures, buyers put an average of $7,074 down on new vehicles. But regardless of those guidelines, putting a larger down payment helps with your loan to value, making you appear to be a lesser risk to the lender. It could potentially get you lower interest rates as well. Remember, I'm not providing financial or legal advice. Be sure to do your own research and form your own opinions. But my personal thoughts here are, while I love saving and paying cash, I personally feel like a nice sweet spot for many people is a healthy down payment of well over 25% or only financing what the lender says is their minimum amount required to finance, which is usually between $7,500 and $10,000, combined with a 0.9 or 0% short-term loan. That helps keep my credit score looking good for just-in-case moments in the future. Many people have asked, should I take a home equity line of credit at a lower interest rate to buy my new car? Again, personally, 
I would never take equity out of my home to buy a car. I just wouldn't do it. Would you? Let me know your opinions in the comments below. I'm sure you will. I appreciate you so much for being here with me and have a wonderful rest of your day. I will see you soon. Bye-bye.